So, in my last game, I showed you how to code the Chrome Dinosaur game with JavaScript. But, somebody commented, it's not a game. So, I've tried again, and this time, I'm going to be showing you guys how to code Minecraft from scratch in HTML. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm going to be showing you how to code the most basic version of Subway Surfers known to man. You know the game Subway Surfers, where you're running and you have three different lanes to pick from? It's pretty much the same thing, except for it's with HTML divs and it has no user experience whatsoever. It looks like crap. <laughs> but it's fun to play and it has the same basic premise as Subway Surfers. Alright, so I'm just going to start by creating an index.html, a style.css, and a script.js file. Now we'll go into our index file and use the Emmet plugin to just create a basic HTML template. Then we'll link our style sheet to the index file and we'll link our script file to the index file. Now we're going to go into our HTML and we're going to create a div and we're going to give it the ID game. Everything is going to be inside of this div. And we're also going to create another div inside of it with the ID character and a third one with the ID block. Now that we have our HTML created, we can hop over to our CSS file. I'll start by just getting rid of the default padding and margin. Just makes things easier. And we'll start styling the game div. So I'll add a width and a height and I'll add a border. And it looks good so far, but I'll just add a margin auto so that it's in the middle of the web page. Then I'll move on to styling the character div. So I'll give it a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels so that it's a square and a background color of red so that we can see it. We want it to be at the bottom of our game div, so we need to give it the position relative so that we can move it and then move it down to the bottom. We'll do the same thing with the blocks, give it some styles and we'll make the background color black. Now we got everything we need to start working on the JavaScript. What we're going to do is create a function so that when you click the left arrow key, our red square moves to the left 100 pixels and when you click the right arrow key, it moves to the right. So we'll start by creating a function that moves it to the left. What the function does is get the left position of the character and then remove 100 pixels or add 100 pixels depending on which function it is. Lowering the pixels makes it go to the left and adding to the pixels makes it go to the right. Now that we have both functions, we're just going to create an event listener that waits for any of the keys to be pressed. And then the two if statements check if those keys were the left arrow or the right arrow. And if they were, then it runs the right function. So now our character is able to move left and right. But it doesn't stay inside the game div. It's able to leave. So we want to constrain it so it only stays inside. And that's pretty easy to do. We just add some if statements. If we were to add to the left position and that would make it go outside of the game div, then we just don't do that. That's basically what the if statement does. And so now we can move left and right, but not outside of the game div. Now we need to create an animation so that the block slides down at your character. I'll create some keyframes that basically just set the top position at the top and then slide it all the way down to the bottom. Now you'll notice that the block goes out of our game div, it passes the bottom. I'm not totally sure what the best way to do this is, so it's a little bit of a hack. But basically I just created another white div that's on the bottom under the game, so if the block goes out of the game div, it's covered up by white. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it gets the job done. And because I added that div, it actually covers up the border because the borders are on the outside of the div by default. So I just went in and changed the box sizing to border so that the border is on the border and not outside of the div, so you can still see it. So next we need to create a function and all it's gonna do is just change the left position of the block. So the left position can either be zero pixels, 100 pixels, or 200 pixels, so it'll come down in one of the three columns. So what we wanna do is create a function that runs every single time the animation starts and we want it to change the left position of the block. So that's what we do here. We first need to access our block element and then create an event listener on it. And I actually learned this. I thought it would be animation start so that the function runs at the start of every animation, but that only starts at the very start once. So we need to use animation iteration so that it runs every single time the animation runs. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> So inside of the function, we just create the variable random and we set it to any random number under three. So zero, one, or two. Those are our options. 
And then we multiply it by 100, so the possibilities would be 0, 100, or 200, like I talked about before. Then we just set our new left position, and that's that. So now the blocks will come down randomly in any column. Our game's almost done, we just need to add some hit detection so that if the blocks run into each other, the game's over. The way we do that is by creating an interval function that'll run really fast, like pretty much constantly running over and over and over again, just checking if they're on top of each other. So we'll create an interval function and run it every one millisecond. Might be a little overkill, you could probably get away with like every 100 milliseconds. And then your JavaScript will run a bit faster because it's not running every millisecond a thousand times a second. <laughs> But I like my games to be crisp, so I made it every one millisecond. <laughs> so inside of this function, basically we get the left position of the character and the left position of the block. If they're the same, then that means they're in the same column. And so if they have the same top position, then that means they're on top of each other. And we don't have to get the top position of the character, because it doesn't change. So we can make our if statements check against the fixed position of our character. And so if all of these conditions are met, then that means that the blocks are on top of each other in some way, and so the game's over. So we will alert, game over, and we'll also remove the animation from our block or else it's just gonna keep going. If you want, you can create a counter to display your score at the end, and you would just increment it every single time the animation function runs, that changes the left position. So now every single time a block comes down, it adds one to your score and then at the end it presents your score. And that's it, the game should be done. But you might realize that if you're on your phone, you don't really have a left and a right arrow key. So to fix that, we have to make it mobile friendly. It's actually not that hard. So basically we just create two divs, left and right, and they're both the entire screen except 50% of it. So it's the left half and the right half. They're positioned absolute and there's no background color so they're completely invisible. And then we add an event listener that waits for it to be touched and then it runs the correct function. Ooh. Nope, I <laughs> suck. There you go. And so that's it. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video. I think this is a fun project to try out on your own. So you should try making this from scratch and then adding to it. Try to think of new ways that you can innovate and create new games. It's a lot easier than it seems. So that's why I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. If you do end up making it, then leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to check it out. And don't forget to leave a like if you watched all the way through. And if you did watch all the way through, then I love you. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.